Welcome to the Global Quilt Connection, where you will meet quilt teachers from around the world who are offering independent enrollment workshops and events. Glad to have you here. Our first teacher is Mel Beach. I am Mel Beach. I'm an artist, teacher, and writer. You may have seen me on The Quilt Show or Quilting Arts TV, or perhaps read one of my published articles. Welcome to my San Jose, California studio, where I am equipped and very experienced with offering live online lectures and workshops, primarily geared towards quilt skills and online quilt shows and festivals at this time. I provide lots of support for scheduling online workshops that includes promotional materials. I send my PDF handouts in advance along with brief technical information so participants can really prepare and be successful and relaxed. My classes are multimedia incorporating slideshows with high quality visuals as well as live demos. And they're very interactive using a variety of Zoom tools to uh, create engagement. I offer flexible scheduling options. We can certainly schedule a workshop six hours in one day, or we can break it into two sessions. This allows participants time to digest the information, maybe practice between sessions. It accommodates time zone differences and provides opportunity for evening programming for those that are working full time. I'm seeing lots of benefits, especially for free motion quilting online classes. These classes are open to quilters of all level, especially beginners who are very successful in this more relaxed learning environment where they can work at home, see great video demos up close, and they can work on their primary machine. That includes those folks that prefer to work on their long arm or their mid arm. They are welcome to join the fun. My most popular quilting class right now is Modern Free Motion Fillers and Fun, great for all quilters of all levels. I'm also deploying a new crazy in love with free motion quilting. This is my crazy quilt take of a whole cloth quilt. It'll be available in mid-March. Mod moles and bright blooms with their brilliant cutwork reveals at the end. Pebble and play. Magnificent mondos is more geared towards experienced quilters and walking fit wow, great for all quilters. These workshops pair well with my free motion creativity and reality lecture. My fun take on free motion quilting. I also offer a challenge yourself lecture where I talk about my experiences with 90 plus quilt challenges. That lecture pairs well with modern improv piecing workshops such as slice of improv or freestyling and spiraling. Both are great scrap friendly. And then my goal is to put fun and games into 2021. And that includes my new little mini play shop designed by Dice where we roll the dice to explore new creative possibilities and a brand new lecture that will be also available in spring fun and games and quilting. I invite you to hop over to my website, melbeachquilts.com, where you can learn more about my lectures and workshops, my availability, and use that contact me form to schedule. You can sign up for my monthly newsletter as well. Thank you to Sue and Lyric for hosting. Thank you all for watching. Have a great year ahead. Thank you, Mel. Our next teacher is Karen Combs. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Combs. I'm a teacher and an author. I'm a fabric designer and a quilt designer known for my quilts of illusion. To bring you my classes virtually, we've actually set up a filming studio. We have professional studio lights, a boom mic, a three camera setup complete with a close up camera. Here's a guild member and her beautiful cat watching my quilts of illusion lecture. I love seeing all the smiling faces after the lecture. Speaking of lectures, I do have two Zoom lectures available for your guild. The first lecture is Quilts of Illusion. It's a virtual trunk show filled with inspiration and information about making all kinds of illusions. There'll be lots of photos. We'll look at how these quilts are created and we'll even get to look at a close up of the quilting. You Bought That Wear is a fun lecture filled with ideas about unusual places to find quilting notions. I use these items in some unusual ways and I can't wait to share them with you. As a bonus, we'll take a little tour of my sewing studio and see how I use many of my finds. I have three Zoom classes available for your guild. Chip Out of Every Block is a four hour class. It's a fun illusion that will change depending on how you look at it. This block is created with simple shapes and it's a quilt that can grow to any size you wish. 
Believe it or not, there are no set-in seams in this block. Here's a few students showing off their blocks. Joel Box is the second class I offer, and it's a four-hour class. It has a beautiful three-dimensional illusion, and this quilt is so quick and simple to make. In class, we'll play with different color options, as well as different layouts. I love seeing the smiles as everyone shows off their blocks and their quilts from class. Patchwork Illusions is my third class, and it's a six-hour class. It has been very popular over the years. I've taught this technique to literally thousands of students. These cubes have so many design options. The possibilities are almost endless, and the illusions are amazing. Here are some students showing off their beautiful cubes. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Karen. Our next teacher is Jan Doyle. Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. My business is called Wise Works. And you can find me on the internet, or you can call me at 203-314-3095. I'd like you to consider a possibility of three different presentations to offer to your guild or club. The first one is Quilts in the Underground Railroad, Fact or Fiction. Second is Thread Painting from Start to Finish. And the third one that I taught at uh, Houston International Quilt Festival was Improve Your Photography, Improve Your Quilting. There's a huge controversy whether quilts existed as a method for slaves to escape in the Underground Railroad. But is that just historical fiction or lore, or is it based on facts? We're going to look into that. But while we discover that and talk about it, I will be showing you some quilts that were supposedly used and um, the meaning of using a bonnet versus a cap. And we'll just have a lot of fun discussing it. But I'm going to let you come to the conclusion. What do you think? I'll present the facts and you make the decision. Another program that I love to present is called Thread Painting from Start to Finish. I like to use my own photographs, which is how I started. And I would uh, put them on fabric. And then I would thread paint them. This is a monarch butterfly on a chrysanthemum. In the presentation, I take you from soup to nuts. We talk about threads and what works and what doesn't work, needles, uh, accessory tools that you need, how to get your uh, photo on fabric or other solutions. If you don't want to go into um, the the effort or the, the project of trying to make put your own photos on fabrics. I do offer kits that kind of get you started. They're small kits. They uh, let you taste the activity, but not be overwhelmed by it. That's something that could be considered. Then I have improve your photography, improve your quilting. Few people really understand what f-stops and shutter speeds and what they do for a camera, how you can use your lenses to the best effect, and some very simple Photoshop effects that really take your picture out of ho-hum to magical. That program was well received at Houston, and you might be interested in it too. Coming up in September, I'm going to be releasing another presentation called iPhoneography. Many people, I have very few people don't have an iPhone or an Android phone, and you can take some stunning pictures with them, and I will teach you how in that program that's going to be released in September. This is an example of a picture that I just took a couple of weeks ago on my iPhone. It's an orchid I bought at a big box store, and I'm very happy the way it came out. So Wise Works presentations and workshops are just fun. Please consider one of these presentations. I have a few more on my website, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Now we'll see what Sarah Goer has to offer. Hi, I'm Sarah Goer, quilt teacher and speaker from San Jose, California. I'm having a great time visiting with guilds on Zoom. I enjoy sharing my rules and options of planned improv piecing lecture, as well as the variety of workshops that I have to offer. 
The majority of my workshops are scrap friendly and none of them come with uh, tricky tools or specialty items that are needed. So they're the perfect workshop to host for your guild where your members won't need to go out and get anything to be ready for it. In Scrappy Squares, students work from a pile of their favorite scraps, cutting squares and creating a composition of their liking. Then we go through the process of how to turn their design into a pattern that they can use. In All About Angles, students will use a pile of 6 to 12 hand dyes, batiks, or solids to follow my rules and create these units that have a consistent repeated angle. In creating a scrappy slab, students will use all of their scraps to sew them together to create their own fabric. It can be used alone, like you see in the quilt on the right, or in a variety of ways, including the blocks you see in the quilt on the left. Every quilter knows about the ubiquitous log cabin block. In this workshop, students will explore a variety of options to make an improv log cabin. I will present numerous design opportunities, color placement opportunities, and other elements that can be worked into a log cabin. Each of my workshops can be scheduled as one live six hour Zoom session or two live three hour Zoom sessions scheduled on back to back days or consecutive weeks. Any quilter has all the tools they need for my workshops and there's no homework to do ahead of time to get ready for class. All of my workshops include a discussion on how to iterate on the design that they've created in class and different ways to use this technique for a variety of compositions. My favorite lecture is Rules and Options of Planned Improv Piecing. It pairs well with any of my workshops or can be scheduled alone. In this fast-paced hour-long lecture, I show my process and system for setting rules and guidelines to drive my design. Participants come away feeling like they've attended a workshop, inspired and ready to create at home. I'd love to talk with you about scheduling a time to hang out with your guild on Zoom, either for a lecture, a workshop, or both. You can reach me at sarahgoerquilts at gmail.com. And you can find more information about my lectures and workshops at saragorquilts.com. Thank you, Sarah. Paula Golden is up next. Hello, my name is Paula Golden, and I bring a spark of creativity to every workshop and lecture that I offer. I have been teaching for over 35 years and have a wide variety of in-person workshops. Please visit my website at www.paulagolden.com to see a complete list of them. In the meantime, here are the virtual lectures that I offer. Let's go take a visit to Hawaii and we explore the history, the geography, the culture, art, and legends of the beautiful islands and see how they all impacted the formation of the beautiful Hawaiian quilt style. In Healthy Quilting for All Ages, we learn simple things that we can do to keep our quilting life going forward into the future, from changes in our quilt studios to some small lifestyle changes. The art and science of quilt making explores how these two somewhat divergent fields are actually totally integrated and work hand in hand to help us create those beautiful quilts that we make. Do you ever wonder why you aren't making the quilts that are tied into the bottom of your heart, the Stepping Stones to the Creative Soul explores some of the blocks that we all experience and simple solutions that we can incorporate into our lives to help bring those quilts into fruition. The Quilts of Virginia travels through the highways and byways, the mountains and the valleys of this state as we learn a little bit of history and view quilts from 1607 to 1899. The virtual workshops that I offer are all half day, and they include the Mariner's Compass and Circle Off Center and Oval Design. Handouts are provided, and trust me, if I can draft a Mariner's Compass, you can too. In the ABCs of applique, we learn seven different tools or methods of preparing our applique pieces so that we can use them for a variety of different occasions. And this is for hand or machine stitching. And then Applique Paula's Way is another way 
um, sometimes a little bit more involved, but I like it because it's easy on my eyes and I can make design choices up to the last minute. So visit my website, www.paulagolden.com. I am looking forward to when our paths cross in the future. Until then, stay well, stay healthy, and happy quilting. Thank you, Paula. Now let's welcome Cindy Grisdella. Hi, I'm Cindy Grisdella, artist, teacher, and author of Artful Improv. I'm pleased to offer live online lectures and workshops to guilds and groups, as well as on-demand classes to individual students. I focus primarily on improv piecing and design and using color fearlessly in your quilts. I have four virtual lectures available. Two of the most popular right now are Playing with Colors, where I offer tips and tricks for using color effectively in your work and not being afraid of color. And Anatomy of Improv, where I detail the three different ways that I use to create an improv quilt as well as uh, some tips to know um, when it's finished, since you don't have a pattern to follow. My other lectures are Free Motion Quilting with Style and Journey of an Art Quilter. They last uh, 45 minutes to 60 minutes, and um, usually there's plenty of time uh, for questions and answers at the end. I really enjoy that give and take with my audience, and I hope that they do too. My live online classes are fun events where I use slides and short videos to demonstrate techniques, uh, plus handouts emailed ahead of time uh, to reinforce those. Students get plenty of time to sew with me available for questions and constructive feedback. Improv puzzles, artful improv, and fearless curves all focus on improv techniques and design. Classes can be four hours or six hours long. Uh, the six hours classes can be broken up into two three-hour sessions with time in between to students to work on their, for students to work on their own. Many students prefer this because it gives them more time to get uh, focused on the design with me available for them to ask questions. I have three on-demand workshops that individual students can take either on their own or with a group of friends. Um, they are Artful Improv, Improv Intro, and Fire and Ice Bar Jello. Each class is set up with videos, text, and still photos so students can review the material however they feel most comfortable. I'm available via discussion groups or email for questions. Please visit my website and blog at cindygrisdella.com for Guild Workshops, uh, and lectures, click on the Workshops Lectures tab. For on-demand classes for individuals, click on the Online Learning tab for more information and links to register. Thank you very much, and I hope to hear from you soon. That was great, Cindy. Now let's see what Candy Grisham has to offer. Hi, I'm Candy Grisham. I am a quilter, sewer, and teacher. I've been teaching quilt classes for about 25 years now and sewing since I was a small child. I have reimagined the Dresden quilt block and I'd like to share that with you today because that's what my workshops and my programs are all about. My programs center around taking traditional blocks like the Dresden and coming up with something that's new and exciting and innovative. And I'm really excited to share that with you virtually or in person someday. My program is the Dresden journey that I've taken, or what happens if you give a girl a wedge. It's a PowerPoint program with a trunk show that goes through the beginnings of my Dresden journey all the way to right now with all the different quilts that have been made and how that's been done and sharing with you how this has progressed into a book. Workshops, I have two that I'm offering. One is the Dresden Reimagined. In this workshop, I will guide you through fabric selection, background and layout, how to make different Dresdens. I've got five different edges we'll learn, as well as some pieced blocks and some interesting ways that you can add your own unique touch to it. All of my workshops are pre-recorded videos and live. So we spend the day together learning and sewing. I also then offer a follow-up approximately six weeks later where we do a show and tell and we have some question and answer. 
And then during that time, my videos are all available to you privately on a YouTube channel. The second workshop is called Dresden Still Life. In this, you design a vase and a still life with your Dresden blocks and other motifs. It's a lot of fun. It's very unique and creative, and you can add so much to it. People have told me that the workshops are enlightening, creative, a lot of fun, and that usually I'm a pretty patient teacher. I would really like to say thank you to Sue and Lyric for providing this platform. Um, all my contact information is here or in the printouts that are available to you. And I certainly look forward to hearing from you either online or in person. Thanks. Thank you, Candy. Diane Harris is up next. Hey everyone, welcome to the Stash Bandit Studio. I'm Diane Harris. My business is called Stash Bandit and scrap quilts are my jam. No matter what trunk show I'm giving, I'm always using scrap quilts to teach, to entertain and to introduce new ideas. Let's talk about my four top trunk shows, beginning with Make Extraordinary Scrap Quilts. Here is where we'll let the fabric do the work. We'll look at lots of different types of scrap quilts and we'll talk about ways to make diverse fabrics work together. Whether you're limiting the palette or using reproductions or creating contrast, those are the things we'll talk about in Make Extraordinary Scrap Quilts. The Jingle Bells Trunk Show is a happy holiday celebration. All of these Christmas and winter holiday quilts are viewed as we ask ourselves, what are the lessons that they have for us? Uh, they might teach us how to do something new. They might encourage us to try something different. Uh, or they might help us to avoid a pitfall. Those are all the fun and games of the Jingle Bells Trunk Show. Windy Wonders, A Quilt Block Grows Up. This is one of my favorites. Uh, we begin to think like a designer. And I've taken one little block and made dozens of quilt designs from it. And we'll peek at them all and you'll begin to say, how can I twirl or twist or invert? How can I reimagine or recolor? How can I rotate? How can I revise? How can I get inside this one little idea and make it my own? So this one's all about creativity and I think you would really enjoy the Windy Wonders Trunk Show. Let's play Dress Up is my Dressed in Plate Trunk Show and we'll see basics plus fancy pants variations. I love Dressed in Plate and there's so much that you can do with it. I can't wait to share that one with you. The Taste Test Trunk Show is my unexpected sampler quilts. No longer just blocks in rows. These are interesting and unique settings for quilt blocks and you might even have them on hand. I have a couple of new things coming up. New discoveries in scrap quilts and quilts for all seasons are both going to be available this summer. I do have classes as well. Lots of topics for quilt guilds and then different topics for open enrollment. Learn more at stashbandit.net and on Stash Bandit Quilting on Instagram. I hope we'll chat soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. David Owen Hastings is up next. Hi, I'm David Owen Hastings and welcome to my studio. I'm a graphic designer, a gallery artist, and a modern quilter, and I'd love to tell you a bit about my lectures and workshops. I've got nine workshops to choose from, and they're from three to six hours in length by Zoom. Inspired by Architecture is a fun one based on architectural photos. And similar to that is Inspired by Art, where we take a piece of art that you like and figure out ways to turn that into a modern quilt. One of my most popular workshops is mini mid bod quilts. This is a half day workshop where we, we create these little mini compositions that look to uh, mid-century modern design. I've also got a two day workshop for modern abstract quilts. And this is a really fun one because we start stitching on paper first and then move on to fabric. Indigo Modern is inspired by Japan and all things blue and white. And Quilted iPad Cases is a project-based workshop. This is a little iPad case I designed and I walk you through the steps for how to create that. And also Snappy Eyeglass Cases is a fun one where we learn to do quilt as you go 
and how to insert a metal closure for your snappy cases. Stitch paper collage is more of an artist uh, inspired workshop where we cross the bridge from quilting to art, stitching on paper. And visible mending uh, also calls to my uh, love of Japan where we learn some fun techniques for mending your clothes in a decorative way. I've got six lectures that are one hour long plus up to 30 minutes for Q&A. Exploring nature with paper and stitch is all about my journey as a visual artist from galleries to quilts. And that pairs well with my workshop stitched paper collage. Indigo Dying in Japan is about a, a trip I took to Japan two years ago to learn about all about indigo. And that ties in well with my Indigo Modern workshop. And my lecture Minimal Design, Maximum Impact is all about minimal design, obviously. <laughs> and it ties in well with my Modern Abstract Quilts workshop. That's the two day workshop. I've also got a professional development series of lectures, branding, Instagram, and Zoom. And this is all for people who might be interested in taking their quilting um, work to the next step, the professional level, because quilters are artists too. Again, contact me at davidowenhastings.com or through Instagram. I would be very happy to book a lecture and or workshop with you for summer of 2021 and beyond. And uh, if you send me an email, I will shoot you a PDF that summarizes all of my offerings and it includes pricing as well. Thanks, David. Next up is Sam Hunter. Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Hunter of Hunter's Design Studio. I'm a quilt pattern designer. I'm a book author. I'm a lecturer and I'm a teacher. I've been sewing since I was about seven and I've been quilting for over 30 years. I'm also a classically trained fine artist, and I have an MFA in fiber art. I love doing my lectures interactively, where I can present information and ideas that become a conversation with you and your guild members. I do a lecture about my studio space, and I show you how to set up your space inexpensively, both for useful storage options and for healthy ergonomics. Another lecture I do is about the creative process. But one of the things that I show you within the lecture is that any type of process that works for you is actually the best one for you. I also show you how I designed a couple of my most popular patterns. The third lecture you can choose is a history of words on quilts. And we talk about how we can use the medium of quilting and fiber to become very powerful canvases for telling personal stories. As a teacher for classes and workshops, I believe everybody has innate artistic talent. I'm a really encouraging teacher and I have a wacky sense of humor, so we laugh a lot. I'm also a very kind teacher, so my classes are a very safe space for you. We also have little segments of class pre-recorded so I can replay those if the class is going at different speeds. I have a new class this year on how to make mini quilts that incorporate your word or phrase of the year. We talk about how to choose a word that's meaningful to you and how to make it artistically using any fabric techniques you like. I can also teach pretty much anything I have a pattern for, but before we choose one, I like to have a conversation with you about what types of classes your guild enjoys. I have process-based classes if you want to learn a technique and product-based classes if they would rather make something specific. I also have classes that make smaller things so you don't leave with a large UFO. So let's have a chat so I can fine tune this just for you and your guild. If your guild doesn't have the technology to run a virtual workshop or lecture, just let me know and my team can step in and take care of it for you. There are several ways to find out what's going on on my website. First of all, Look at the top menu for a place up above that says hire me. It has all the details about how we run the workshops and the lectures. And it also has pricing and a contact form for you to just fill out and I'll get right back to you. I hope to see you in a workshop or a lecture soon. Thanks, Sam. Natalia Korover is next. Hi, I'm Natalia Korover. I'm a mixed media artist, but the media I mix is a bit different. My main material is single-use plastic. The plastic shopping bag which has caused so much havoc on our planet and is now back with a vengeance during the pandemic.
The plastic packaging which is shrink-wrapped around so many items we buy on a visit to the supermarket. I collect these plastics and use them for my art. It's my way of keeping them out of our oceans and making a statement about the climate emergency we're facing. The transformation you can subject plastic to makes it unrecognizable. At times you have to look real close to figure out what my artwork is made from. These are my workshops. Plastic Nature. Students collect single-use plastic bags and packaging and learn to use it instead of fabric to create nature-inspired artworks. It could be a strictly hand-stitching workshop, a machine-stitching workshop, or a combination of both. Graffiti Lab is about working with single-use plastic as well, but this time we concentrate on the graphic nature of all the lettering that abounds in single-use packaging. Students can put together puns, quotes, or haikus and take their graphic skills to another level. Textural Style is a brand new workshop fresh from its debut at Craft Napa. If you're like most artists and crafters, you've got scraps left over from a gazillion projects. They hold a great deal of promise that shouldn't go to waste. Transform them into a beautiful background or a standalone composition using a sewing machine and hand stitching. Point of view. This workshop will challenge you to look at the man-made world from a different perspective. We'll explore the juncture of lines, simple curves, and dynamic angles. You'll receive guidance and tips on how to build powerful compositions, using perspectives that speak directly to the unique way in which you see the world. Digital Thread is a Photoshop Elements workshop. I teach my favorite techniques for manipulating photos, layering images, and adding graphic elements. I share my techniques for printing imagery and collaging it with other images and ephemera. My lecture is Alternative Stitching Practices. I take you through the many mixed media materials and fabrics that I work with and share my tips and techniques. So taking a workshop while being in your own studio has many advantages. Everything you need is right there. And you don't have to stretch your neck looking over other people's shoulders trying to see what the teacher is showing. I teach these workshops over my own Zoom channel and share tips for using it during our time together. I'm able to record the workshop or lecture and provide access to the participants for a limited time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Visit artbynatalia.com slash workshops. Thank you. Thanks, Natalia. Ellen Lindner is up next. Hi, I'm Ellen Lindner from adventurequilter.com. Ever since this past August, I've been using Zoom to teach live classes and do presentations for gills. It's all worked out very well and has been extremely well received. I have three lectures that I do and they all have very broad appeal to both traditional and art quilters. My newest is called Confessions of a Fabric Whisperer. It includes some of the wacky stuff that I've done over the years and lots of in-progress photos. Some of the things I've tried have been successful and others have resulted in interesting results. But I'll show you those as well. In my lecture, Playing with Fabric, it covers my journey from traditional quilter to art quilter. Along the way, I show you some useful techniques and also give you ideas for sparking your own creativity. Of course, we can never learn too much about color. In my one hour lecture, I will touch the tip of the color iceberg, but still share lots of valuable information. Viewers will learn how to use a color wheel and the drama of a complementary color scheme, among other things. I have six classes, and as an art quilter, all of them have to do with art quilting. Some of them have to do with a specific technique, and others are more conceptual, perhaps dealing with color or design. But all of my classes are good for new art quilters. I have six classes, but I'll let you read about most of them on my website, and I'll just tell you about two of them. My newest class is called Love It and Leaf It. And this is an easy three-hour class. So since it's three hours, that's great for those who don't want to sit in front of a computer all day. Plus, it's a fun class. In the three hours, students will finish their composition, probably face it, and possibly even get it framed. On the other end of the spectrum is my class, Design Your Own Nature Quilt. And this is the most open-ended of my classes. 
In it, the students learn about design using a variety of exercises. And then they create a sketch for their own quilt based on their own photo. Finally, they create their own unique quilt and it's based on their inspiration. This shows you some student work. They always do a great job. Please reference my website for additional information about my remaining classes. My website is adventurequilter.com. I'd love to work with your guild. Thanks, Ellen. Our next teacher is Rose Parr. Hi, my name is Rose Parr, and I'm the author of So Healthy and Happy, Smart Ergonomics, Stretches, and More for Makers. What's the end more? The more is what I lecture about to different guilds and groups, and it's all about sewing smart. Sew smart, the ergonomics of healthy quilting, is a lecture that I've been presenting for a few years now, and I'm continually uh, updating it and um, uh, improving it. I've lectured all over the world with it, uh, because let's face it, we all need a little bit of help when it comes to sewing smart. We do know that, yes, we're supposed to be at 90 degree angles to our sewing machine, and that's just great, but there's a few things that come into play with that that we also need to think about in addition to just being at that 90 degrees. We need to think about our posture. We need to think about the things around us and how they're set up, not just our sewing machine. We need to consider maybe we don't have a nice sunken table like this and we're at the dining room table. What are we gonna do to get there? Two things, you either bring your sewing machine to you or you bring yourself to your sewing machine. So we'll discuss different ways to do that. We'll look at your cutting table and, and your cutting techniques. We'll look at your ironing board. It's as simple as that. Is there a perfect way to iron so that you can be pain free? Yes, there is actually um, a way that can keep you the most pain free possible. So you're at your sewing machine and that's all great. You're all set up. You've got the, the perfect chair. You need to make sure that there's a space between the front of your chair and the back of your knees. Again, it's all about circulation. We never want to disrupt circulation. If you've got your laptop set up on your, your table near your sewing area, make sure that you raise it with something. This is just a simple thing from the dollar store designed for dishes in the kitchen cupboard. Uh, raise it so that it is at eye level when you're sitting. It's not, you're not having to look down anywhere. There's so many different things that we can talk about. My website is healthyquilting.com. My Instagram, Healthy Quilting. Facebook, Healthy Quilting with Rose Parr. YouTube, Rose Parr Healthy Quilting. Look me up, reach out to me. Let's talk about uh, how we can get together and bring uh, some healthy quilting to your guild. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Now we'll hear from Linda Sullivan. Are you all ready for Colorishes Quilting? I'm Linda from Colorworks Designs and welcome into the Colorworks Sewing Studio and Workshop area. Today I want to highlight my most popular workshops and lectures that are both offered virtually and in person. So let's get started. A new workshop added both virtually and in person is Bodacious Blossoms Made Easy. In this six hour workshop, students will work on both a flower block and a leaf block, honing their quarter inch piecing skills, learning easy breezy half square triangles, and all my tips and tricks for curved piecing. This is a super fun workshop for those who want to work on their precision piecing techniques. This is my most popular workshop to date. It's called the No Fear of Sewing Curves Cosmos Workshop. I offer it both virtually and in person. Liberated strip piecing comes together with curved piecing to make this gorgeous 22 inch Cosmos block. Students will learn my wonky piecing technique as well as all my tips and tricks for sewing perfect curves. It's a great workshop for quilters of all skill levels who want to liberate their quilt making and conquer their fear of sewing curves. Another one of our most popular workshops is Color Bugs and Curves, also offered virtually or in person. This is a two technique in one class. In part one, students will get liberated and wonky while slashing and sewing these cute color bug blocks together. Part two, I'm going to share all of my favorite tips and tricks for sewing perfect curves while we construct the leaf blocks. Again, this is a perfect workshop for students of all skill levels who want stress-free piecing, getting liberated and wonky, and best of all, forgetting about their quarter-inch seam for the day. 
One of our most popular workshops in person and now offered to you virtually is wonky piecing and easy applique. This can be booked in either a three hour or a six hour format and students can choose to make a dog, a cat, or even a fish in class. Students will learn wonky stress-free piecing and also the beginning basics of easy machine applique while stitching around these super large shapes. It is a perfect workshop for students of all skill levels and are guaranteed to have a fun time. I also offer my Colorworks Trunk Show where I show you loads and loads of quilts from my 20 year journey in the quilting industry, as well as our most popular lecture today, which is called Got Color. I guarantee you'll boost your color confidence and will show you how to find inspiration in the everyday objects that surround you for your next quilting and color palette. I invite you to go over to my website at colorworks.com under the workshop tab where you can download my rate sheet and a brochure. So I would love to come visit you and your guild for a lecture or workshop. My contact information is right here and I hope to see all of you on the quilt road soon, either virtually or in person. Thank you so much for your time and consideration today. Thanks Linda and Turley is up next. Hi, I'm Ann Turley from Fallbrook, California, north of San Diego. I have presented programs and workshops to quilt guilds for close to 20 years. My style is lighthearted and fun, and I'm sure your guild will enjoy my stories and my quilts. I offer four programs. First is Confessions of the Quilt Police. I'm a trained judge and have judged many guilds and regional shows, as well as a few county fairs. With this program, I hope to take away some of the mystery behind the judging process. Next is the challenge of a challenge. A great way to grow as a quilter and an artist is to participate in challenges and themed exhibitions. I've been a part of many of these and will share my approach to creating such a quilt. Find out how I made a large giraffe fit quilt fit a butterfly theme and still be accepted. I have many animal themed quilts in the menagerie. I love animal quilts and find that they best allow my creativity to flow. I have a multitude of giraffes, flocks of birds, and many humorous stories to tell as well. Lastly, there is Just Quilts, a personally curated selection of my most recent quilts, along with a few of my early quilts for comparison. I offer five workshops. Making Faces is one of my most popular as I've taught this class for over 16 years. The guilds seem to really love this, this workshop. On Point consists of easily constructed blocks with overlays to create the illusion of curved piecing. Improv for the masses, we all start with a few orphan blocks and finish with a modern wall hanging. This is great for all skill levels. And then there's the three point block. Who would ever believe that such a simple block could lead to so many layout options from table runners to queen size quilts? Leaves is one of my older classes, but it's still pretty popular. With everything constructed in a freeform style, each quilt is quite unique. The tree is loose cut, the leaves a bit more structured. I also teach on quilting cruises. Contact cruise planners for details. We have trips to Alaska and Hawaii planned for this year, as well as one to the Panama Canal later on. I'm currently available for most dates. Email me or call me for more information. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Kelly Willie will be our last presenter in this webinar. I'm Kelly Willie. I'm a crazy miniature quilter from California, and I would love to share my passion with you. I know you've heard that making miniature quilts is hard. Well, I'm here to convert you one quilter at a time. In my lecture, Little Quilt's No Big Deal, I show lots of tips and techniques on how to make a little quilt and how easy they really are. I'll also show you a lot of my own little creations to get you excited. And in my lecture, Little Challenges, I'll show you how to take a pattern that you've purchased, like this one, and reduce it down so that you can have a really cute miniature that didn't take you near the time to make as a full-size one. 
I will also talk about ways you can create your own miniature patterns and reduce down other patterns. Imagine getting to try lots of new patterns and techniques for a lot less money and a lot less time. I have several workshops to choose from and I teach my own original miniature patterns. During my workshops, I utilize several camera views so you can always see what's going on up front and personal. The workshops are fun and relaxing. I'll give you a lot of breaks and encourage you to have a great time. Oh, and the good news, there aren't any quilt police allowed in my workshop. I am not going to force you into making one perfect block. My goal is to teach you how to be precise and accurate with your cutting, pressing, and piecing so that you can become a miniature quilter also. Truthfully, your skills will improve once you become a miniature quilter, and you'll see a difference in your large quilts too. By the end of the workshop, you might have even finished your quilt top. Here's some examples of some of my students' work. Imagine finishing a class and not having a UFO. Now that's a novel idea. I'm available to speak and teach either virtually or in person, and I have my own Zoom account so I can host the meeting for you if that works best for your guild. I also offer different options for my workshops, so you can go to my website and see which one worked best for you. If you've got a group of six friends that wants to put together a workshop, we can do that also. Overall, I just want to bring my love of miniature quilting to you. Visit my website, littlequiltcreations.com, for more information to download my teaching contract or to download some of my free patterns. And remember, with every single quilt we begin, we get to start over and make a new treasure. Happy quilting. Thank you, Kelly. That was great. All right, teachers, turn your videos back on. It actually went really fast. There were so many really cool classes that I thought, I want to take it. Mm. All right, so now we have a live question and answer. There were some questions typed into the chat to our attendees. Please stick around for um, a few more minutes and ask questions of your favorite teacher. Anything is up for grabs. Go ahead and type it in the chat down on the bottom or touch the screen of your device. Look for the chat function. Sometimes it's under more if it's on your device and ask us a question. Okay, one of our first questions is, do you also, teachers, have on-demand classes? So the first thing I want you to do is I'll just wave your hand if you have on-demand classes. And then one of you can answer what is an on-demand class. Do one of you want to answer that? Cindy. Unmute first. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I, I think that on-demand classes are a lot of fun. Uh, if you uh, don't belong to a guild or if you uh, just want to grab a group of friends and get together and do um, something on your own, I've had quite a few people do that. Uh, you can um, access the classes from a link on my website um, under online learning. And then you uh, purchase the class and you work through the videos and the uh, text and still photos uh, to do the project either on your own or with friends. And I'm available uh, to uh, answer questions in a chat forum or in a private Facebook group. Thank you, Cindy. Um, put us back on view. Um, and guilds, I have a suggestion for you. If your budget doesn't include funds or if you're kind of iffy about um, hiring somebody for a workshop, as well as a lecture. I encourage you to find um, teachers who offer um, individual enrollment classes and just say, hey, guild members, a bunch of us are signing up for this class on this day and then schedule your own Zoom webinar to come together and work through that class. Okay, teachers, um, what are some of the advantages of teaching virtually over teaching in person. We know they're apples and oranges, right? We know that. Neither one is terrible, but what are some of your favorite things about teaching virtually? Mel and then Kelly. 
I love that I have all my supplies here. And so when I'm traveling, I'm limited to two suitcases packed at their max. But if there's questions that are maybe about my other workshops or other, other information, I have everything at my fingertips. So it's really well um, in terms of, you know, being able to provide even more value for those that are taking my in-person workshops. Great. Kelly, and then um, I'll find you in a second. <laughs> Go ahead, Kelly. I love that you get to see everything up close. So when I'm doing a demo and normally when you're in a classroom, everyone's crowded around and only a few people can see. Well, on camera like this, you get to see it right up close. So to me, that's like the biggest advantage and you can stay in your, your slippers and jammies and stay comfy. <laughs> I love that <laughs> one. Um, Linda, you had your hand up. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to like tag on to what Kelly just said, which is absolutely every, you know, everything uh, is up close. Uh, every student has like a front row seat to what you're teaching. And what I like, too, is the pace of the class. I have found teaching now we've been teaching Zoom classes since about April. And the pace of the class actually moves along a lot faster. And I find that people and everybody uh, get projects done in the class. Um, and so it's, it's perfect for that. It's great. Thank you. Um, any other teachers have a favorite? I saw somebody, let me get back to you, Candy and then Sarah. I've found that with the online classes that students love having more of their own fabric and supplies at home, not just what I can have around, but as they start to create they say, oh, I could use that. Oh, I could go grab that. And they really, really like to have that and not have to wonder about what to bring to a class. Absolutely. Sarah. Yeah, so I'm finding that um, sometimes the six hour workshop feels really long in person and especially on Zoom. So guilds are enjoying having two three hour sessions and um, that gives people bonus sewing time in between. And I really enjoy the conversation that continues with my students in, in um, emails between classes where they can show me their work in progress and ask follow-up questions. Um, and then the time that we have together live, they can kind of ask any question about quilting also. And I have everything handy to be able to show examples and answer questions about my general quilting tips and tricks. Thank you. We have a question in the chat that um, do any of you have some really good tech support tips for the um, guilds and students for how to have your best experience with a Zoom lecture or class? Ellen and then Rose. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, yes, you know, the technical side of things is, is so critical. And um, I've been teaching since August via Zoom and we haven't had any technical glitches. I think that's largely due to the fact that I do require that the guilds do a little bit of, of teaching um, with, the, or excuse me, Zoom training with their members. And I provide training first to the guild leaders um, and then give them the support with some articles and with some information from me in person or not in person, but via Zoom. Um, as to how to best work with Zoom. And then of course, I open up the classroom early and get to repeat some of that information with the students directly. And it's all combined to be a really, um, really good system. So yeah. Thanks, Ellen. Rose, and then David. Um, I just recently wrote for the Canadian Quilters Association magazine, um, an article on, not on the technical side so much, but on um, 10 ways to avoid Zoom fatigue, which is a real thing. And I'm sure a lot of the teachers here know that, you know, after a certain amount of time, uh, people are, it's, it's exhausting paying attention. Um, but, uh, and so I, um, um, I, I can't I can't share the exact same article on my blog, but I can reword it and put it on there, which I'm going to do. Um, but it's just little things like the thing that I found really interesting is that one of the panelists had said, well, during the break, can we still all talk? And I wanted to pipe up and say, no, that's the whole point of the break, because if you just sit and you keep chatting and you don't get up and you don't do whatever. But um, so, yeah, so it will be on my website whenever I get around to rewriting what I wrote for them because I can't post the same thing. 
Um, but it's it's a real thing, Zoom fatigue. Thanks, Rose. We decided behind the scenes that um, during the break from now on, um, all the teachers that want to are going to turn on our videos and have a dance party. <laughs> Go, David. Oh, so I've got actually got a Zoom lecture that's it's geared toward people who want to teach um, by Zoom, but also it's great for guild leaders and programs people. Um, to pick up some tips for how to run your event on Zoom. And it's only an hour long and I actually have an open enrollment version coming up. You can check my website for the date. Uh, it's on my calendar. And um, yeah, I encourage you to check that out. But I also, in my workshops and lectures, I give people tips about how to look your best to some basics, like having your camera up a little <laughs> bit higher than, than eye level, just so that you look your best and having some light so that you can share your work on screen all that kind of stuff um, is great to share. Excellent, David. Um, one of our next questions that has been asked several times is what do you guys think is going to happen when we go back live? Is Zoom gonna stick around? Are virtual classes gonna stick around? And specifically, are you all going to still be offering virtual classes? So first of all, everybody wave if, after we go back live, you'll still be offering virtual classes. And I see pretty much every, everybody doing that. So of course we will. So who wants to answer that question? We'll get Diane, then Jan, and then Paula. Sure. Um, yes, you know, definitely. I am going to be offering a virtual going forward as well as some in-person travel. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for guilds to have a combination of types of programming. Um, and where I live, and gosh, in lots of parts of the world, there is a really brutal winter that you need to get through. It's pretty dicey to schedule travel for both the teacher and the guild during those months. So I think those are, are two reasons. Um, the weather, um, people love classes virtually because like we've said, they're in their own space. So I think it'll be a combination going forward and I really look forward to uh, doing some of each. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Jen. Well, I find that virtual classes are really, really convenient and I think people really enjoy them. We miss the personal hand-on interaction, but it also allows us to go places that we couldn't go before, go to the opposite side of the country, go to the opposite side of the world in a timely manner. I don't think it will ever replace uh, in-person, but I think it's a wonderful adjunct and I look forward to continuing it. And I look forward to continuing traveling, but also do the combination. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Paula. All right, doing virtual workshops, I think is very practical for a lot of guilds who are maybe smaller or who have a limited budget because they can now bring in teachers from around the world to come and visit because they do not need to worry about travel and lodging expenses, but simply the lecture fee. And I know, you know I'm in a small guild and that's important to us. Um, so I think that we will be keeping large and small, or I'm sorry, virtual and in-person because in-person is always special. And I know we're all looking forward to that. I think we all absolutely agree with that. There are a few people who are done, Anne. Um, we'll get to you in one second. Um, but we all know that we love in-person but there really, there really are some great advantages to virtual. And I know I've had bookings two years out when definitely we'll be all back together, but they want virtual. It's kind of cool. And and we need you to unmute yourself and you might be frozen, so. Unmute. All right, I'm sorry. There okay. now. You're good to go, start over. Okay, I wanted to say that I enjoy doing the, uh, the virtual programs in some ways because I can show quilts that I either no longer have in my possession but I'm still quite pleased with and still want to show or quilts that don't travel well. Um, I tend to work with a paper, paper backgrounds and after rolling and unrolling them several times, 
they start to show wear and tear. So they don't travel much, but virtually I can show them to you, you know, time and time again. So that's one of the reasons I enjoy the, the virtual lectures. Thank you. Um, here's a question. Teachers, um, what are some of the ways that you run your Zoom class so that um, all of the attendees have an enjoyable experience? So before we were talking kind of about Zoom tips for guilds. Um, now let's do Sam, then Karen. Hey, Lyric. One of the things that I do with the workshops is um, for those of you who've been on a Zoom workshop and you know what the Brady Bunch view looks like, <laughs> the Brady Bunch view has about 25 slots in it. So I make sure I never have more than 20 people so that I can't lose sight of anybody. Um, I want to make sure that nobody gets shuff shuffled off to page two. Nobody can become a wallflower. The other thing that I think is really amazing is that we can use breakout rooms if we need to break a small group out for a refresher on a technique. Or if we need to talk one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in a live workshop, you can talk a little privately to the teacher in a Zoom call. Everybody's got your business. But Zoom allows us to also put you in a private space so we can help you. So I think, I think it's, it's pretty important that we use the technology to support you. And I think Zoom can do that. Thank you. Um, Karen. Yeah, I think... Um... There's a couple of things that I do with the classes, just like I do in person. I tell everyone, we're gonna work at your own pace. So I'll show demos, but they're working at their own pace. And if I need to show a demo several times, it's not a problem. But one of the advantages of Zoom is I use a combination of live demo and also video. And so the videos that I'm showing are small. We have the quick two or three or four minutes. So we can pop in and watch it again. Another advantage of the video is that we can zoom in so close, even closer than if you're looking with your own eyes. So I can really highlight little bits and places where I want to show where the needle is hitting exactly at it. So I think that embracing the technology is something that now I look at the benefits and what is it that I can bring to the class virtually that maybe I couldn't do in person. And working at everyone's own pace is one of the advantages. And if they want to see the video again, I tell them, just tell me. Uh, one more thing that I do is while I'm teaching, I'm watching the screen. So I'm seeing everyone. And if I see a puzzled look or if I see someone kind of stop and they don't know what to do, I can ask them, hey, what's going on? Are you OK? So there's a lot of things that uh, we can do as teachers to make sure everybody's enjoying the class. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karen. Those are all really good tips. Um, I know all of us have been teaching for a while, so we've all developed our own um, methodology for making it really good for the students. Um, one tip that I would give as far as equipment or technical things, like there's the way Zoom works, but you as a student, if you can get a lamp or a light or work next to a window that is lighting your work or your face instead of coming from behind you, then we as the teachers can much more clearly see what's going on in front of you and can better help you. Um, backlighting, all of you know, <laughs> makes it really hard for us to see if you're like, if you're sitting in front of a big bright window, all we see is your silhouette instead of the colors of the fabric that you're using and such. Okay, um, just a couple more questions. Um, Natalia. You haven't talked to us yet. Before well, I ask a question, is there anything that you want to add and tell, um, tell our viewers? Well, I wanted to say that one of the things I like really a lot about virtual teaching is I've started a new trick during my presentation. Um, when I'm teaching a class, because I know that everyone is in their own home studios, I know that I can throw them a curveball and they can go and get something from their studio that they didn't know that was on the list. And that adds a little bit of excitement to whatever I'm teaching because they're not expecting it and it's fun. Isn't it fun? <laughs> I've always thought it would be kind of fun to have a, a 
like a quilter scavenger hunt. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the class. All right. Um, one, one more thing that um, our viewers have asked about is what are some alternate scheduling methods that you can do virtually that you that are much harder to do in person? Anybody want to answer and wave your hand, Sam? And then Ellen, real quick. One of the really great things is um, I just got hired for what would be quite an early morning lecture in New York and I am West Coast. Um, so I'm going to be at my desk at 6 a.m. for them, but that's something that's very, very easy to do remotely. I, I think it stretches out our available time bending possibilities into a lot of other time zones and countries. I agree. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what I've attended in that way. So Isn't it amazing? I've had classes where I had students from California to London all in right? the same class. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Ellen. Um, yeah, you know, when we were traveling, the guild would have us do a lecture on a Monday night, then do a class on a Tuesday and a class on a Wednesday. And by the end of Wednesday, those students who had done everything, they were just worn out. So now those things don't have to be scheduled together on the calendar. So you can still do your lecture on Monday night. And maybe the first class isn't until Wednesday and another mm -hmm. one's on Saturday and nothing has to be linked up. So it allows the students to be fresher. It's a great advantage uh, for the students. Absolutely. All right, teachers, any last comments? Wave your hand at me if you have something more to say. Jan, one quick thing. I think everybody who takes one of these classes from any of these teachers is in for a fun time. And I look forward to meeting meeting you, but I know all the other teachers do also. So have fun, keep quilting. Thank you for being here and smile and wave goodbye to all our attendees. We're goodbye. so happy you came. Larry and Sue. You can find recordings of previous Meet the Teacher webinars on this YouTube channel, as well as at globalquiltconnection.com. Com. There you can also download information for all of the teachers with their email and website links. Thank you for watching. Sue Blyweiss is the mastermind behind this webinar and my name is Lyric Montgomery Kennard. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel and you can see upcoming webinars as well. Thanks, stay safe, be well, and keep quilting. <laughs>